This episode of the PC Perspective Podcast is brought to you by Lenovo. See more at Lenovo.com. Hey everybody, welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is episode 397 being recorded on April 27th, 2016. I'm Ryan Trout. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. And I'm Alan Malentano. Guys, it's almost the end of April, which means we are almost one third of the way through 2016. So that means that there's still snow on the ground here in Laramie. I'm sorry to hear that for you. Yes. Like significant snow. There was earlier this week. It's melted off a lot, but there's still snow on the ground. We were actually, while you were gone, uh, ironically, we talked about snow shoveling tips and techniques. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Your wife's very handy listen, here. You know? It would have, would have been helpful, maybe. We didn't perhaps. give the appropriate tips. No, no. Do not use on cars. Yeah, right. Perhaps that... No, no, do not. <laughs> would have been maybe uh, an interesting... <laughs> because that cuts right through the clear coat. Yeah, oh, yeah. Does it, on with the metal bits? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, at least there's still color on the hood. <laughs> yes. For now. <laughs> Extra color there now, but still color on the hood. Uh, welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, we talk about computer hardware and sometimes snow shoveling tips on the podcast. It's really riveting stuff. I, I think you should check in every week. If you want to uh, find us there, pcpro.com slash podcast is the, is the uh, place to go to find RSS links, video files, audio files, um, YouTube videos, anything that we have for you to follow the show, gain access to it, etc. can all be located there. Uh, and if you want to join us when we record the show live, we do that on Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific at pcper.com slash live. Uh, and if you need a gentle reminder for that, we have a mailing list specifically for you. We're up to over uh, over 11,500 people on this mailing list now uh, at pcper.com slash subscribe. You go there, uh, you sign up for this mailing list here. We ask for your name and your email address. That's it. We send you a notification a couple of hours before we're about to do a live stream. Um, most of the time, uh, most weeks, you're only going to get one email for our podcast. Uh, but every once in a while, you'll get uh, additional live streams that we do uh, if we have guests coming in or we're doing dumb things like VR streams or stuff like that. So It is not a newsletter. It is not a newsletter. Josh does not have access to it. And, uh, yeah, we don't, we don't output all of our content to it on yeah. a on we don't blast stuff out to that it's just like hey we're about to do a stream yeah yeah it's 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 really only but news. you'll get the emails faster if you include your address the name of your first pet and your social security number and your mother's maiden name yeah don't we, forget the credit card we definitely okay. add that to the top of the mailing list right so actually there, no save your credit cards for this next thing actually yeah uh, uh we also have a patreon running as well don't worry we could put it in for you yeah, yeah, yeah you just give us the credit card number and we'll input it into here uh this is your ability to if you want to directly contribute to us on a monthly basis right so if you think uh the podcast we do is cool or the reviews we write or the news that that we do uh is helpful or interesting um you can support us by going to patreon.com slash pc per you can see that page here if you're watching the video version uh, are, are you going to have to Photoshop that header image now? No. Just like I'm, put a black X over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over me? Uh, a, red, a circle, like a red circle with a line through it. Yeah. No like can. Just, uh, just cover it with like an eight ball. <laughs> yeah. It's just cover do you it mean, with Jeremy. Do you mean like the billiard or? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. His head replaced his head with an eight ball. That was oh, Vegas. I see. I see. An eight ball and an eight ball. An, an eight ball with an eight ball. Yeah. Yeah. Doing it an eight ball. Sure. I don't know. Um, so if you go there, you can find about uh, the reason behind it. The, I mean, it's basically uh, you being able to help us do more interesting and creative and unique things, right? So we're still trying to get up to that level where we do the weekly mailbag so everybody can hear about Josh's uh, family tips, his fathering tips. Yeah. <laughs> maybe yeah. not the creating of fathering, but maybe the fatherly Aww. advice. Yes. Uh, uh, his relationship tips, his deep uh, thoughts, with his Josh winter Wallace. advice, and also you know we'll do technology stuff. Maybe some bathing tips, right? Um, you know things yeah. about uh, how to properly use loofahs, uh, oh. how to clean them. You know, at one time I could have been an AOL relationship specialist. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I promise we'll also answer technology questions in that if we uh, if we actually get to do that. So I'm out. Uh, patreon.com slash pc per uh, and again anybody who uh, adds or updates or subscribes during the live stream i will uh, read off your name reg regardless of how ridiculous you put it into the system as um as we go so keep that keep that and keep that in mind if that interests you at all all right all right let's get to the stuff of the week because there, there's, a, there's a decent amount the first thing we're going to talk about 
is the AMD Radeon Pro Duo. It's launching for the third time, I feel like. Uh, Ken, when you went and first saw the dual Fiji card that didn't have a name at that point, that I kept calling the, uh, what did I call it? Fury X2. Fury X2. Mm -hmm. Such a good name. Which they probably would have done had this been, you know, pushed a gamer the card? gaming card. Yeah. Um, that was like in June, wasn't it? Yeah. It was like at E3 2015. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They showed the board, the two GPUs on it. They said yep. it would be coming in October. Yep. Uh, it didn't. It didn't. And then in November, it didn't. And then we kind October. Of, it's like nine months ago. Yeah. Well, June was even further than that. Ago. October is only six months ago, oh, by the way. Yeah. Well, it's a long time. It's been a long time. <laughs> it's been a long delay. Uh, and then in March, they showed it again as the Radeon Pro Duo, right? And. It's an interesting branding combination. Radeon is a gaming brand. Yeah. Pro is a not gaming brand. <laughs> right. <laughs> like by definition. Uh, and Duo it is uh, well Duo. Is means two. So it's yep. for pro gamers. It's then. dynamic. It's for professional gamers with Siamese twins only. I think. Oh, okay. It's for dynamic professional gamers. One one GPU per head. Instead of one GPU per eye, it's one <laughs> GPU per head, right? Um, Siamese twin VR. So the AMD officially kind of like launched launched this. I think I think it's actually for sale today on Newegg, right? Yeah, you can you can order it now. I think so. Yeah. Um, it's two Fiji XT GPUs, eight gigs of HBM memory, four on each GPU. Um, the original launch listed it as four, uh, and in March they listed it as four Display Ports, and then somebody went, "Oh, damn it! You can't connect the Rift to that." So they did. They actually changed it to three Display Ports and an HDMI port. Huh. Uh, Sixteen teraflops total compute. Fifteen hundred dollar price tag. Uh, we know we we've known about this uh, for a while. The, the more interesting stuff here is here's the design of the card. It looks like a Fury X card. It's longer. A little bit longer. Yeah. Use. Yeah. It still has a single 120 millimeter uh, rad cooler there, and I, I meant radiator, not like badass rad. Right. Right. Anyway. Um, so specs are kind of as you expected, 8,192 stream processors, two, you know, that's, it's just that's two, of two of everything, right? Yeah. Engine clock is up to 1,000 megahertz, which is essentially the same as the R9 Nano is rated at. Um, everything else is, again, identically the same, 500 megahertz memory speed on each of the GPUs. You do have three 8-pin power connectors and a total board power listed as uh, 350 watts. So, so this is, I guess, just... A pair of nanos together. It's it's essentially a pair of R9 nanos together, okay. and it looks nice. Like if you look at the at this picture here, you can kind of see the design of the cooler, right? I think cool. that's neat looking. Yeah, nice looking. It's, yeah. it's, it's impressive they can get that much water cooling gear into a two slot design. It's self contained. Left it, uh, These are the pumps. They should have left it without the lid, like a clear acrylic. Yeah. Oh, Covered is this the 90s again? That looks pretty nice. I mean, not a swatch. You get your Velociraptor just, you know. 74 gig with the window mounted up next to no, it. that was on the 150. <laughs> Whatever. Sorry. There wasn't an, there wasn't it was an option. not on the 74. 74. No, there wasn't. I linked to it last week. I'll go look back there. Um, so uh, that's, you know, they, they also mentioned here uh, that it's 1.5x faster than the GTX Titan X, 1.3x faster than the R9 295X2. Um, the Titan X obviously being the single GPU version there. The Titan Z is the other one. They have some benchmarks here where they compare um, it, the, the the new Radeon Pro Duo, to, um, let me zoom in a little bit here, to the Titan X and the 295X2 and like Rise of Tomb Raider, GTA 5, Battlefield 4, etc. So, wait so, a minute, wait a minute. Wait. They said it wasn't a gamer card. It's not, but look at the 4K gaming performance. Well, why are they showing you gaming performance? Look, man, it's Pro. Do you not see that in the name? Look. Designed for creators. Look at this slide. But that you, look at it. Look Creator, at it. Creators are playing Tomb Raider. I See, guess. Well, yeah. When they, well, okay. they got to create it, Tomb Raider somehow. Yeah. When, yeah, yeah, when yeah, did yeah. the slogan um, for creators who game and gamers who create? When did that come out? Was that in January? I never really heard that. Yeah, that was definitely a thing. That, that's how they were like branding it at first. Okay. Now in March they didn't. At the Capsaicin event they didn't use that phrase. Yeah. But at some other point they had because I'm not I would not have made that up right that was something that was something AMD marketing came up with um, in terms of the board design real quick it's uh, you can see that the picture here of the of the board it's two GPUs a PLX chip in the middle your th power connectors it's that's a crowded PCB yeah uh, for sure but not as crowded as if there wasn't HBM correct. You're right. It would have to be a bigger card or a more complicated engineering job yep. uh, if you didn't have HBM there, right? Because that's 
the yeah that is a sweet, considerable amount of space saved. But here. what's the length of that compared to a two ninety five X two? Uh, it's shorter. Okay. I have the two ninety five X two over there, but is it plugged into something? It, it just uh, like it doesn't them, so. look shorter just by like looking at this, the pictures of it. This is about the but... same length as a, a Nvidia reference card. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, right. That's it's it's like a few. Here, well, yeah, I actually have one right here. So right. yeah, there's there's one. Here is a Radeon Pro Duo. Yeah. Um and it's a smaller cooler than uh, I expected. Uh, hold on, Ken's gonna grab the X2. Yeah, so I mean that's uh, or he's gonna get a reference card of some kind. But this was, these are really uh, hard to hold and show off because because there's two parts. Because you have to Here. have two parts. I will vana hold, your hold that part. I will vana your Here, rad. Here's another one. Your rad cooler. Oh, oh, oh crap! God. No, I got to vana another okay, rad cooler. There's, there's All that. Right, so there. This uh, make good audio. So one's uh, longer. Good old slapstick. It's got a few inches on it. Yeah. So if I do that. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's yeah. the difference in the Josh, 25 Josh likes that it has a few inches yeah. in it. Oh. oh, no, you've crossed the streams. Tubes. When the girth is the, the same. The tubes are getting clogged. And how much? Uh, yeah, that's about... Not the same as yeah, a it's about the same. NVIDIA reference? Yeah. Yeah. This is a 7 yeah, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now they're tied together for forever. Uh, okay. okay. All right. You take right. this one. Uh, Ooh, AMD, no, dual cooling. One. That's All fine. Right. We're good. We're uh, good. Okay. okay. Right. We conduct science live here at PC Perspective. So, um... Rulers. We've never heard of those. Yeah. You can see the, the, two, the two GPUs in the back here as well. Um... So <laughs> I like the three display ports. Oh yeah, HDMI. We got to stick that. Well, HDMI. that's what the Fury X is. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, it maybe they, it might have just been a, a mislabeling initially as well. So it, it, here's a, this launched on Tuesday, I guess officially. Um, even though on Saturday, the slides were leaked all over on sure. WCCF Tech and you know other places like that. And so that's why I, I wrote my story originally based on their slides that were leaked out. Um, it launched on Tuesday with no reviews, worth noting, because they didn't sample. They didn't sample the media with uh, uh, any any hardware, right? And their argument here is, well, it's it's a card aimed at at, at professionals now. It's, Not that they've never sampled us a Fire Pro, right? No, we'll they, they've definitely that. done that. Yeah. And, and so whatever, I went through outside channels and was able to find one. And uh, so we're gonna do. I'm gonna do an review, but that's what I've been testing all day today. Uh, I had to. We we're using this as a platform to test and get ready for Pascal and Polaris too. So we've got all new games and new GPU test bed and all that stuff. Um, so we'll have the Radeon Pro Duo, the 295X2, two nanos, uh, a Fury X, and then I'm gonna throw two 980Ti SLI an SLI in there, I guess, as well. Okay. Um, it is a $1,500 card, right? So here's... We can talk more about it when I actually get the review done because we'll have a a, a firmer grasp of what it actually performs like and the pros right. and cons of everything. But I think it's pretty obvious, right? If you have two nanos, you know what this is going to be like yeah. in terms of performance and uh, uh, scaling capability and all that type of stuff. It's just a little bit different on what the temperature and um, um, power consumption and stuff yep. may be like. Uh, I could say that the temperature is great. I think the GPUs were running at under 50C <laughs> the whole time. That's pretty cool. On Fully that. loaded. Yeah. Uh, does it like, well, so does, yeah. It, does it throttle back? Because the nano throttled back for temperature. The nano throttles back for power. Oh. Not for temperature. Well, that's got three eight-pin power connectors on it. It does, but it's rated at three hundred fifty watts. Oh, right? so it's still trying to stay in that envelope. It's going to stay at, at that. They're at not that doing the two ninety five X two thing, <laughs> where it draws five hundred. They just well, went where they just went over the spec. No, <laughs> yeah. no, this is only three hundred fifty watts, okay. and it's three power connectors. I think that has three power connectors as well, right? Yeah, but that one will draw more than three. Right, right. But does it have three eight pins? Is that uh, what's on it? I it think has what two. It yeah, that's just uh, two. Interesting. Yeah. It's only two, and it will draw. Because that was a 500 watt draw. Yep. Product. Um, yeah, I mean, we drew like 25 amps when we were measuring it across. Yes, it was trying to melt my shunts on the, right. on the power uh, measuring thing. Uh, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious why AMD doesn't wa want to market this as a gaming card, right? Because it's it's poorly timed. Yeah. It's 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 expensive. Um, it's inefficient compared to what they're going to be launching uh, fairly soon. It's specifically poorly timed because of VR. Right, like right. multi GPU is in an odd spot because it's very hard to do. DX12 makes it more complicated. Yep. Uh, virtual reality makes it complicated. All these places where where uh, uh, the SLI crossfire complication is now more complicated than it's ever been. Yeah. Um, so I think marketing a dual GPU card as a gaming card is going to be tough for a little while until that kind of gets settled. Yeah. So that's one reason for it. Also, it's very expensive, um, and. You know, there's there's a possibility that with what NVIDIA comes out with, 
uh, next month or whenever it's going to be with Pascal that they, they're not going to have a dual GPU version, I don't think, at first. Um, but like two of those at a certain price, you know, in SLI may be significantly less expensive than this and also be way, way faster sure. than it as well. So there's a lot of reason for it. I understand why they didn't sample it. I don't hold it against them. But uh, hopefully they won't hold it against me that we just went out and found one to, to review, right? Like, because if they're like, I, I think it's completely fair to test this gaming card when three or four of the slides in their slide presentation deck to the media are about the world's fastest graphics card. Here's 4K gaming performance. Um, here it is in relation to the Titan X. Here it is in relation to the uh, 295X2, right? Mm -hmm. Both of which are gaming cards. Yeah. The Titan X, you might be able to say, is not 980Ti is the exact equivalent of, though. Um, they have drivers from, like, when I went to AMD's website and looked for drivers for uh, this card, it took me to Radeon Crimson 16.4.2, which okay. is a gaming platform. But there are also professional drivers available for it. You, if, if you go, go to that the Fire Pro subpage, you can get mm -hmm. drivers for it as well. So you can choose what driver... Path it's just a more no frills, no frills driver for the professional side, I guess. It's, uh, it's supposed to be, you know, going through different more stringent feature certification, different feature set, okay. you know, that type of stuff. Um, so it, it's it's an interesting product, right? And and I'm, they're not going to be super excited about it because the chances are it will not it, it will not get a recommendation for us for people to buy. But the two ninety five X two didn't really either. What mm -hmm. did that come priced at? Fifteen hundred dollars, yeah. right? Yeah, yep. fourteen ninety five is where it launched at. Um, and yet, that was a gaming product. That was something they pushed very heavily. They talked about it being the fastest graphics card in the world and blah, blah, blah. This will probably be that as well for mm -hmm. some time period. Yeah. But have we ever recommended a dual GPU card? Not, Not really. really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, have to have, you have to be a very specific person to do that. Um, so we'll take a look at it. Hopefully, by Friday morning, I will have the review of that done. i got to do my NVIDIA testing uh, tomorrow and then do the teardown and pictures and write up and all that type of stuff, but it'll be pretty simple. It's it'll be a lot of, uh, values and not a lot of, uh, uh, editorializing on that type of stuff. I think we know the architecture quite well. Um, so look forward to that. We have a couple of other quick stories to go through. Um, Jim Tanos, who has uh, written a couple of articles for us in the past, posted a story on the site today, guest article, if you will, called console gaming on the PC, PS4 remote play versus Xbox One streaming. And it is exactly that. Um, if you weren't aware, uh, both Xbox and PS4, Xbox One and PS4 now have the capability to stream those games to your PC. So if mom is watching TV in the main room and, and you want to play an Xbox One game, you can actually leave the Xbox out there, uh, stream it out over the network to your PC, play yeah. it on your uh, on your monitor, right? This doesn't surprise me as much for Xbox stuff as it does for PlayStation stuff. I agree. I was a little surprised when Sony kind of built that capability into it, right? Um, so, well, I mean, it already had that capability because they do streaming to, like, Vitas and stuff, so they probably just had to write a simple Windows app to interface with their streaming sure. stuff. Sure, right. Yeah. So it's not, it's not like they re-engineered the PlayStation to be no, able to do no, this. No, 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 yeah. I'm just You're surprised right. to see They're them They're already encoding that. the video so they can do the recording stuff and the Twitch stuff. Yep. So, you know, just send it to another location. If you're curious about this, if you're if you're a PC gamer that also has consoles in the house, um, Jim did a really good job of, of explaining how the setup process works, what the pain points are in, in, in each case, um, you know, how, what the quality was like, what the limitations are for each platform. It's kind of interesting. Um the uh, uh, let me scroll through. Here. I'd imagine you're going to get some latency. There's there's some latency for sure. Like it's it's better than uh, internet based sure. streaming. But it, sure. it was he said it was very playable. Um, this this is kind of interesting. Like if you look at the feature comparison, like the Sony Remote Play is supported on Windows 8.1, Windows 10, OS X. Is it OS 10? Do we say it's OS 10? That's OS is that 10. what the people in the in crowd do? Is OS yeah. 10 Yosemite and El Capitan? Yeah. Uh, uh, all four of those operating systems are supported by PS4 Remote Play, but to do Xbox One streaming, they require you to have Windows 10. <laughs> Weird. Right? So it's just like little things like that that it's like, okay, 
Microsoft doesn't have to do that, but they choose to. Um, Xbox One uh, will let you use wire to wireless. It does have a 1080p streaming capability. The PS4 Remote Play is 720p limited. Uh, they both do stereo. Uh, audio only, uh, and you can kind of see some of the remote access differences there. Keyboard text entry, the PS4 does not allow it apparently, um, whereas the Xbox One streaming does. Um, An interesting thing I didn't realize that someone in the chat mentioned is that along with this comes an official driver for the PS4 controllers, which people have been waiting for since the PS4 has come out. Oh, if you install that application, I guess you get that. Yeah, I don't know if it's a separate package or yeah. two or not, but that'd be really cool because I know there are a lot of third-party apps people yeah, are trying cool. to use to get the controllers to work. They don't always map correctly. Good point. Good point. Um, and also, um, so the PS4 allows you to do remote access, right, which is actually you connecting to it from across the Internet, Right. Whereas officially Microsoft's Xbox One streaming does not. But if you happen to put um, what's he say here, if you put uh, uh, the console in the DMZ yeah. and set up port forwarding, <laughs> you yeah. can basically do that anyway. You're kinda, right? you might that's be asking the, for some other exploit kind of stuff. That's not the but. best option necessarily. Right. <laughs> but you don't have to go through that with the PS4. I mean, all of those Xbox is. exploits. Well, I'm just it's saying. Windows based now, right? Like, like, yeah. But there's if there's the potential gonna, there, you want an Xbox exploit because that means you can do illegal stuff with your Xbox. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> true. Uh, he does have a video on here that we uploaded that does runs through a comparison of like the different quality settings on Xbox and PS4, which is kind of neat to go through. Huh. It's hard to tell the difference between like Xbox One on high, like 1080p versus high, but once you get down to like. 360. Sure. You could definitely tell. You can definitely tell the the <laughs> blurriness and quality difference across this. So it's a really good article by Jim. I, I I would encourage you guys to go check that out if you are interested in any of the console streaming side of things. Uh, also, Lee posted a review of a Be Quiet exclamation point Pure Power Nine 600 watt power supply uh, up on the site. I will never get over the. All lowercase, be quiet with an exclamation point, which seems very counterintuitive like, to me. Be quiet, quiet. It should be be quiet, like with like ellipses at the end. Dot dot dot. Be, yeah. qu- be, quiet? Like, be quiet. That's a question mark at the end of the ellipses, right? With the upside down question mark. Uh, <laughs> this is a fairly basic power supply. It's it's uh, uh, what do we call it? Partially modular. What what's the term? Um, uh, yeah. Uh, Partially modular. I'm going to go, I guess... I'll Semi-modular. Go. ATX is not, and the rest of it is? Is that what's going on? Yeah, essentially. Yep. Uh, I think it's ATX and maybe one of the GPU that, power. That's it's Usually it's ATX Jeremy, and the 12 volt, know. the EPS 12 volt yeah. is usually not modular as well. Because yeah. that's yeah. kind of uh, a given, I usually go with right? semi-modular. I thought there was a specific term I can't think I'm of I'm pretty sure this. it's like semi-modular, uh, partially I don't know. modular. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if that's technically associated press, but it's damn close. <laughs> uh, so we... Lee goes through this review, 600 watts, uh, not passive. It's not that quiet, but it's one of those, you know, the, the fan's only going to kick on after a certain load level uh, gets there. Um, looks like it's got fairly modestly length cables. You can see he does a good job of kind of laying out the PCI Express power connectors there. So you got two of them, single GPU systems here, obviously, as you would expect. Look at uh, the size of that cap. Yeah, it's Look not the size of that either. cap. 330 <laughs> microfarads. 85C. I don't know. I don't know if that's good or not. I just like to read the numbers on it. <laughs> yeah. 420 it, volts. That's it's a, middle of the line. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of volts. 420 volt blaze it. <laughs> 420 volt blaze it. <laughs> nice. Uh, so there you go. It's a $69 power supply. So in terms of uh, budget friendly, it is that. Uh, yeah. It's available in four, five, six, or 700 watt models. Very quiet, virtually silent at low to mid power. Um, Warranty he does sucks. have a weakness of use of the TPO 85C electrolytic capacitors. <laughs> so as much the as one we component we looked great, at, it's the one he was like, nah. <laughs> nah, nah, they're middle of the road at best. It's they're 420s. I mean, this is, why, never this trust. is why we like Lee to do the power supply reviews rather than uh, me or Alan, I guess. Um, and apparently, the efficiency drops off at uh, full load as well on elevated temperatures. So something to keep in mind as well. But if you're looking for a Mid-range uh, power supply. Check mm. a look at the Be Quiet Pure Power Nine series in general. Maybe you could use that power supply to um, put inside this uh, enclosure. But it's the, but the power supply was square. It wasn't like bubbly shaped. Yeah, I don't Jeremy, know if it, I don't know what, if it would fit. What do you think about the shape 
and look of the NZXT Manta Mini ITX enclosure, the Maxi Mini, as Sebastian kind of off-puttingly wrote in his review. Well, uh, as I was typing up in the chat room, my eyes, the goggles do nothing. <laughs> why? Why did he shoot this review on a fisheye? That makes no sense. No, but he didn't. Didn't. <laughs> uh, Wait, but what? it looks like it. Yeah. So this 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 kind of shot gives an angle there. So it's it's a mini ITX chassis that has this. I called it the exhale. If the Xbox 360 was the inhale, there you case go. Design. This is the exhale. You ever see a pufferfish? No, I'm yeah. sorry. I had that backwards. By the way, the X. Yeah, it'd no. be an inhale. No. But you ever see a pufferfish? Yes. That's. Like, yeah, I don't. I, I, yeah, I can't get this right. But uh, it, it's like after Thanksgiving dinner, sort of. Okay, look. there you go. Yeah, yeah. It, I'll just, go with that. You're it, feeling a little bloated. This case needs to loosen its belt. It's the it's the <laughs> NCXT Frank Gary. <laughs> and, and but if you turn the crank, if you crank the cooling up high enough, yeah, <laughs> pushing it out, you can actually compress it a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, this as long as it's negative pressure, yeah, you cool. have to create a vacuum inside the case. This diagram, uh, the like breakdown exploded view, shows you like all the different water cooling options. Like, so you can have a 240 rad up top and a uh, 240 up front, which explains the look of the case when yeah. you look at it blown up yeah. like that because I mean, you I got like dual that. fans. And it's a this is a mini ITX case, right? And here's here's a, like the front view of it. You can kind of see it's not as bowed out as it may look from other angles, yeah, right. Uh, but there's definitely it's definitely there. It looks a little bit worse, it looks a little bit more bloated there, I guess. Um, I, I I think the the Manta name for it is kind of spot on, right? Uh, it's a very especially those fish. those lines at the top actually yes. remind yeah, yeah, yeah. me like a yeah. Yep. It's definitely a. Do you like the way it looks or not? It's purely a function of aesthetics, right? Like sure. the bowing out with the window and stuff on the, on the backside, maybe it gives you a little bit more room for cables, right? Like, could, you know, yeah. if you've, if you've ever built a case, Which like will get in your have. way when you try and pull the uh, filter out. Well, no, I'm like on the back, um, on the back of the motherboard. Mm. Like yeah. if, you, if you've ever been like me where you've built a system and you try to like push, I've never been like you. push the case panel back on, like you're scrushing all like the cables together. I don't have time for cable I management. I just have a visual Push of Ryan. <laughs> he's just kind of like he's cramming the Sometimes SSDs. Sometimes you got to put that window side down on the carpet like, so you can push down it's like and pushing then slide the, forward. It's like pushing that last yeah. hard drive up in behind the door <laughs> before he slams it closed. Yeah. Oh no no those are those are at least in there with one screw. Okay. Hard drives. Okay. SSDs maybe. No. But no. hard drives at least one screw. Um, and you can so obviously Sebastian does a very good job here breaking down all of uh, all of this stuff. What did he leave? What were her? What were his notes he left in the uh, in the doc there, Jeremy? Well, one thing is that uh, once you've got it in hand, the pieces it's made out of are very high quality, uh, hmm. up to and including the, the proper PWM uh, fan switch, which is included. So while it does cost a little bit of extra money, you don't have to pay any extra. To uh, get a fan controller put in there, but, and he just really stressed that a lot of it is really high quality construction, but you have to be in love with the look, right? Yeah, but why? Why did he write down purple, obtuse, and clairvoyant? That was under your name. Mm. <laughs> Let me hold my breath for a while. I, I mean, they do stuff in their cases like this photo here, where like the red. Like the 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 edging on the case on the exterior is red. They paint some portions of the interior this kind of red color so yeah. that it matches and stands oh. out. It and pops. the arsen glows apparently. And the what's that? The arsen glows. <laughs> no, does it? I'll yeah, rear input again. output lighting. Oh, all right, all right. Um, I don't know if you like the look of it. It's big enough. It's it'll keep a nano perfectly happy. I mean, you're not going to run into any issues with temperature if you no. spec this thing out properly. Yeah, true. I mean, it's right? it's a mini ITX build or, or system, but I mean, it's really the size of like a micro ATX at least, maybe even really small uh, uh, full-size ATX cases. Yeah, maybe not that. But I think the cable management sucks because I can almost see one in the upper right there. Yeah, that's Sebastian's fault then. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, there you go. There's your lights in the back. As you were talking about, Jeremy, I like that. I yeah, like, I like the lights. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. no, it is. So when you're trying yeah. to find that bloody plug in the back dark, it's kind of handy. Um, 
Sebastian has uh, CPU temperatures here listed as well. Uh, where's the Manta in here? It's kind of it's Down actually bottom. pretty good. Pretty good uh, specs there in terms of both idle and load, competing well with like the Fantex Evolve ITX and the Corsair Carbide 400C. Uh, and then GPU temperatures are a little bit, it looks like they're on the high side. They're the highest of the uh, rated ones here, which I guess makes sense based on the proximity of the GPU cooler to kind of like the power supply shroud on the, on the chassis. Um, and noise levels are modest. Looks like... Um, mm, comparatively a little bit less than the Fantex Evolve ITX and the Carbide 400C. Did he put it in his homemade wind tunnel? Oh, yeah. And we, have his sure. wife blow smoke over it. That's how we get all of uh, our case designs, our case reviews done, for sure. <laughs> right. We uh, When they were near visiting here, they went to the vape shop across the street, and we got the <laughs> one that released the most smoke possible, yeah. please. Yeah. Yeah, that, that vape like shop across the street is set up like an... Like Apple, an store. Apple store. Yeah, it, it like is. An Apple like, store. there's like, there's only like twelve different vape. It's a huge area and they have for the desks. amount of items that they there's sell. Just desks with nothing like on them. Like IKEA, like wood tables. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's nicely set up. If I, you know, at, at least doesn't look if you've like a piece of crap. Ever seen any of the dispensaries in Colorado? You will understand where that's coming from. Yep. Oh yeah. It's like a guy behind a glass table with things yeah. in there. Yeah. 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 Uh, before we move on to our news items, let's thank uh, Andrew Bissaw or Bissaw, who pledged nine ninety nine Bissaw in was, honor of that was for Josh. Uh, outgoing Johnny AC president and CEO. Was he chairman? Chairman. 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 Uh, Abram Abraham Lagunas pledged three dollars. Thank you very much, sir. And HR Puffin stuff. <laughs> Pledged. Are we just talking about Colorado? We were. Nice. H- HR Puff and Stuff pledged three dollars as well. So thank you guys very much for uh, your contributions to our Patreon. <laughs> yeah, we love it. Uh, all right, let's get into some stuff. AMD licenses its server processors to the Chinese government slash companies. Josh, what do we make of it? Are you really asking me? Their stock per- took a pretty big jump after. Yeah, that. they actually it was like, well, you know, <clears throat> positive news. They had you know kind of one two punch here. They had a uh, um, quarter that was not as bad as expected. It wasn't fantastic. It was still like one hundred nine million dollars short this quarter and running in the red. But their big news, uh, other than just kind of stabilizing the company and and doing okay with the amount of revenue, is that uh, they've joined into this joint venture with a Chinese company, and they will be producing uh, server CPUs for the China market. Now, China is a rough market to go into. I mean, it's a lot of people. There's a lot of potential there. People are finding it hard to get into because of, yeah, well, I, I think the the idea is that the NSA is is considered to have put a lot of backdoors into silicon products and... Uh, can utilize some some other you know nastiness to to get into their business. So China is not really pleased like that, but they they want to have high performing server CPUs. So, so they've gone the joint venture with AMD, and it seems like uh, they're getting around a lot of the uh, the laws and, and rules to this by doing kind of exactly the same thing that they are with with Sony and Microsoft. I mean, AMD designs the the IP. They kind of package it. They send off the design for the people to produce uh, as they want and, and where they wish. Um, and, and, and it kind of gets around a lot of these rules that are in place for not only the U.S. government, but, but until on their cross-licensing agreement. So this is expected to be a significant amount of money over the next several years for AMD, and it gets them uh, a good foothold in China. And I'd imagine it's going to be very much the same kind of royalty structure. Uh, you get a licensing fee as well as royalty per chip produced, as well as upfront costs in designing these actual products. We have no idea what they're going to be using. It It might be the latest bulldozer version of, of Excavator that they'll shoehorn into servers. It could be Zen. Mm. We don't know this. Uh, all we know is that it's a significant amount of money coming into AMD, and it's a huge, nearly untapped market. I wouldn't say you know totally untapped right. because 
obviously they're running, you know, a lot of Intel processors and AMD processors and whatnot, but to get over the next big hump, they really want to have a a design from China. And to be able to compete well, they've they've had to go into this this joint venture. And so um yeah, their 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 stock price jumped. Mm-hmm. Bigger than like pretty much any other time, like except that. like in 1976 when they were considered a penny stock. Right. Um, How much longer do you think it is going to be before Intel's legal department decides they're bored enough to just go after them for shits and giggles for the x86 license? Or the U.S. government. Or Well, well the, the problem Intel with that is, first. is VIA already has an x86 license and they True. sell low-end parts to China. But the the government also banned selling x86 chips to the U.S. Gov- or the Chinese government. Yeah, they're not selling; they're licensing. Yeah, but they could ban That's licensing as well if they wanted around, to. Yeah, I, I think I think you're right. Like it's like I'm sure they had tons and tons of lawyers look at this, and by the letter of the law, it passes all that stuff. Sure. Um, but that that the thing. when you have a joint venture, mm-hmm. and the Chinese say, you know what, we'll handle all this legal crap. Yeah, like, all right. I mean, they I did just, get a AMD did get a nice two hundred ninety three million dollar paycheck for just joining well, yeah. in and agreeing to it, and then they'll also get royalties based on uh, on those sales, um, similar to like the ARM business model, I would assume, uh, in, in most in many ways. Um, there was I did see this. I don't know if we talked. I don't think we talked about it last week, but this building in this picture here is like up for sale. Is that yeah, actually they're, they're official? Out of there. Yeah, because that was a that was a rumor. I'm oh, not really? sure if it's actually official or not. I thought it was fairly official that it was. It's, it's not that the building was, was up for sale; it's that the property was up for sale. Yes, yeah, they're, the they're whole, moving the entire thing out. Yeah, they need the, like some sites. They're they're the number of people that are there is like sixty percent of what it used to be. So mm-hmm. they're looking to find like smaller, you know, digs, smaller digs. digs. And you know what? That building is awful. I'm going to be honest with you. Well, Nvidia is going to move soon. Maybe they can take that one. That building. I've been in that building probably ten times. It sucks. <laughs> okay. It's old. I've sat in this like classroom that they have. Like if you go in that front door and go left and walk about fifty yards, there's like this classroom that has nineteen seventies era like desks with the 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 writing thing that folds <laughs> over on on the right I mean, hand side. Like they still make those. Is that, is that how college yeah, still is? Yeah, that's unfortunate. That, that's exactly how lecture halls still are. I went to lecture halls at I went to lectures at AMD is what I'm saying. So as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> they can move on to new ones. I wish hey, you know the, the the positive thing other that they yeah. that they talked about uh, was they're expecting a 15 percent increase in revenue from Q1 to Q2, mm. which mm-hmm. is pretty big because Q1 slow, Q2 is not a whole lot lot faster Q three and and back to school that yeah. they start seeing a lot more revenue coming in but they're expecting a pretty significant jump going from what 880 million uh you know and to breaking uh, uh 1 billion again per quarter which yeah which is a pre- pretty good thing for, for I, amd if anybody in amd is listening here is my call to you from the apu cpu department intel has unofficially shit all over PC enthusiasts, right? With this whole uh, IoT is the future in cloud and oh yeah, PC is now part of our IoT area, true. right? So they're they they'll still launch Broadwell E and they'll still push the enthusiasts that, but they're down scaling their emphasis on PC uh and, and like client. Like if there was ever a time for AMD to come out with like a marketing push or some kind of like hey, we care about you. Here's the parts we've built for you. Here's the platforms like that. Yeah, like the rest of this year should be that. I understand yeah. that that their product must be at least two people left. That they're the launching Pro Duo. Well, I mean, I understand that it's hard to do without Zen, right? Yeah. Like, like they don't have, they don't have the products to make that. Push. I know, but yeah. they but it's it's an impossible. If you push make the to push make. of look, AMD has has never shied away. ATI has never shied away. Like, and all those marketing people now work for AMD. Shied away from like pooping all over your competition when they're mm-hmm. down or when they say something stupid or you know they go against a specific segment and this is one of those areas where it's like okay at least make a case for it at least make an effort down that path but yeah amd do thought. what intel don't it's not in, quite in, as good as nintendo don't but i understand, I understand. In, in, intel yeah, kind of. Uh, let's see a couple of other quick. I'll come AM- up with something. AMD pushes here. Uh, well, well, one one last thing. Oh yes. 
So, I mean, obviously that 15% is probably taken into account that uh, they'll start shipping Polaris. Oh, sure. At least to their partners during this Q2. Yeah. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Huge news, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, AMD expands the Wraith air cooler lineup to more CPUs. Nothing huge here, but it uh, looks like they've added it to the 8350 and the 6350. We'll now ship with the Wraith cooler. Uh, I'm actually I'm going to send uh, the Wraith cooler we have up to Sebastian so he can do a quick comparison on that. Um, Is it going to suck the life out of him? Probably. The Wraith. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't mean I was going to send the cooler. I'm going to send an actual. No, then, yes, an just, actual just, wraith. Just a wraith. child. <laughs> he's Hopefully he's got an 880K to slap it on just to see how it goes. I don't know if he does or not. I'm kind of curious. I'll give him an 8370 to, to, to test it with. That should, that should draw oh. some power. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so nice that they're, they're making that push again. Like here's, we're making a push. Yeah. Intel doesn't want you to have coolers. We want you to have coolers. Right? <laughs> Intel, <laughs> Intel and, knows stock coolers are bad. <laughs> <laughs> bad. Fire bad. Beer good. Uh, yes. And also uh, from AMD, they launched Radeon Crimson 16.4.2. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, I got to this. AMD do what Intel you they won't. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Intel yeah. you. Uh, Intel you they won't. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, Let's no, move on. it's okay. <sighs> I thought it was clever. Oh, in, see, Intel don't, but AMD, AMD, AM do. AMD do. AMD. AM do. Still better than AMD marketing, to be honest. <laughs> That's, yeah. Uh, Intel don't, but AM do. AM2. No, 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 no. We're <laughs> way past AM2. We don't want to get Well, we're not way yeah, past don't, AM2. Don't mention AM2. No. <laughs> uh, and the final AMD news is they released the Crimson Edition 16.4.2 driver. Um, Jeremy, what does this add? to our uh, well, the, software. There, there's a new video card they released that it now supports. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, the Pro Duo makes sense. I'm using this driver they've, currently, yes. Yeah. They've also uh, pumped up better uh, support for the Rift and the Vive, which is good. Yeah. Uh, one of the major things, which didn't really get much press, but I certainly mentioned, was XConnect for external GPUs. So the Thunderbolt 3 GPU enclosures we're starting to see. Yep. Significantly better uh, support. Okay. They also claim some unverified uh, performance increases in a couple of uh, recent games like Quantum Break and Gears of War, which Ryan will have to test at some point in the near future. <laughs> Both UWP apps. Weird. Yeah. You know? Wait, what's it say? Quantum Break and Gears of War. Oh, yeah. 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 That's why I picked those yeah. two. <laughs> so yeah. So we, we shall see. The, the Ashes of Singularity, I totally believe. Uh, because they're, they're just overall kicking arse in DX12 right mm-hmm, now. Mm-hmm. Hopefully that continues. We'll see. Indeed. Yeah, those four games caused yeah. me quite the headache, actually, in a lot of ways. Uh, all right, and so before we move out of our AMD news, we have some more Patreon um, uh, people to thank here. We have Kazutomu Ep pledged $1.99. Thank you very much. One ninety nine. So, Patreon uh, congratulated oh. us as well for hitting two hundred and fifty patrons. All right, so that was nice. Mm. And then um, <laughs> I said I would say anything. Oh boy, that they put on there, didn't I? Uh huh. You did. Yep. I po- this. Can I have to read this? This is not me. Ken Ken did nine eleven. <laughs> just edited their <laughs> pledge <laughs> to six dollars and sixty six cents from five dollars to six sixty six. I. I, I gotta go take care of something. I'll be yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> There's a knock at the door. All of a sudden, knock, knock, knock. Yeah. Who is this kitten guy? I'd never heard of him. I, I don't. Doesn't know even work is. here. <laughs> no. Nope. Yeah. Hey, you know what? It, Jet fuel it, doesn't burn. Oh God! Don't start. Doesn't, nope. doesn't melt uh, 3D print material. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, that's Except right. Yeah, 3D print, yeah. 3D printing, uh, uh, hardware and all that stuff is is pretty resilient. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, <laughs> Nvidia. GP104, which uh, we assume will be the highest end consumer GPU we will see from Pascal initially, uh, that will probably be in the GTX 1080, will not use HBM. Uh, this is what it looks like. Are probably. You, are you excited? Are you jazzed? It's small. It looks like a. It it's going to be power efficient, and it's going to be probably as fast as a uh, 980 Ti. So actually, they're saying here that the GP104 might be for the GTX 1070. 
Oh, well, it would be both. I would assume. I would assume. Well, there's it a two hundred and a four hundred. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, I see. I see. So GP one hundred four two hundred being the cut down version, being you know with X number of SMX units. <laughs> Hopefully disabled. not three and a half gigs of RAM this yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're also showing this picture, which is the GP one hundred four two hundred, which would be um, the same chip, but it's not using HBM. It's using GDDR five. I don't know if we can tell if that's GDDR five X or not. I don't think you can read anything. No, the leaker says the ten eighty will feature GDDR five X, while the ten seventy will stick to GDDR five. Hmm. Really odd resolution ten seventy. Yeah, it will be. They'll have to scale that. That yeah. really interesting. Yeah. The driver can handle that. Um, yeah, we we'll just cut the last ten pixels off the bottom of your screen. Could uh, Josh? I assume a memory. Obviously, if, if these are correct uh, leaks, that the memory controller could handle both GDDR5 and GDDR5X. That shouldn't. Yeah, be Yeah, because I mean they're for them. they're very much the same. The only difference is what the four bit uh, chunks that uh, yeah that it takes. But otherwise, is there essentially very very similar yeah so the that seems very likely having a, a chip that could do both hbm2 and gddr5 is probably not likely um but it would appear that from both pascal and for for the consumer version of pascal that we're going to see soon and the polaris architecture we'll see soon neither of them are going to use hbm technologies mm-hmm. um one or two, it would appear. So not totally surprising uh, based on cost and how well that all seemed to work out for AMD initially. But uh, there you go. It's going to be a busy summer, everybody. I expect everyone to pay attention. Speaking of exciting, riveting graphics cards. Yeah. How would I, How could I interest you in an NVIDIA GT 710? 710? The heck is that? Uh, I don't know. I've well, it looks it like this. this. It's uh, this well, it's is a PCIe One X. It's a PCIe right. by one. Oh, it's the kind of GPU I'd plug into the store test pad. <laughs> it is very much. <laughs> yeah, it's GPU. just for Alan. <laughs> doesn't have a fan oh, no. on it. No, this makes sense. I need all Why my lanes that? for storage. Don't be taking my lanes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need? What would you use this for, Jeremy? Uh, I would supply people at work with this because uh, if you look at the top, the uh, old VGA connectors on a ribbon, which means that it can also be set up to be a two slot uh, in a small form factor. Right, you'll be able oh. to remove that and put on a second one. Oh, so half uh, half yeah. height. Yeah. Actually, right. scroll back up because that looks like it's uh, actually a little shorter than the half height, half length form factor. Oh, yeah. No, it, it will be, but you'll be able to split it into a small form factor one, no yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. And so, so for work, if you've got a guy that, for whatever reason, is doing content creation, uh, yep. but, like, website content creation, <laughs> Excel content creation, yeah. doesn't actually need GPU power, but could use three monitors. Yeah. Good freaking luck doing that with a base model uh, Dell, HP, or Lenovo. It, it ain't going to happen, son. Right. You put this in there, and a lot of the time it doesn't come with a 16 by. It might be electrically 16 by, but it'll only be a one by or a four by. Sure. Pop that in there, no problems. Who cares about the the DDR3? That's it's, or is it DDR5? It's attached. It's three. No, DDR3. No, it's three. Who cares? <laughs> because all you want is three screens <laughs> or a higher resolution. It makes sense. Yeah. For a gamer, hell no. Yeah. But it's true. keep in mind that the performance of Intel's integrated graphics now is beyond this. So you don't get three ports. You, you can three different outputs. It's possible. If, if, uh, if the motherboard the higher does end it. stuff, if yeah, the motherboard has to motherboard support it. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, right? and even some even some lower to mid range boards might um, do that with you know a VGA and HDMI and, like and something, hmm. right? So this is this is definitely not a hey upgrade your integrated graphics card this is as jeremy points out very much a i need more displays display connectivity yep. Yep. part it has 192 you've already cores. got your onboard so full pop that in there and you can have another couple of displays yeah that makes sense 192 cuda cores uh <laughs> which i believe is this, <laughs> is this fermi is like night is like the gtx 280 or something like that like what like, what generation is this i don't know um so 192 that's probably that could be one smx of Kepler. 
Hmm. Uh, let's see, GT seven ten. I think I, I think wonder. so. I'm trying to think if those were one ninety two or one twenty eight. Well, there was a two sixty uh, core two sixty. Remember that one? Yeah, yeah. That was. I don't know. Core, it's only right? twenty five watt power consumption. Power. Su- it still recommends a three hundred watt power supply for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really GK two oh eight. All that other stuff in the GK system. GK two oh eight. Two oh eight. So it's a Kepler. It's, yeah. It's a Kepler Second part. Kepler. Okay. Just cut down Kepler. All right. There you go for your riveting gra- high end graphics hardware news of the week. Yeah. Uh, for your <laughs> high end keyboard news of the week, Corsair and Cherry. I believe Corsair has an agreement with Cherry to like have exclusive access to their new products for some amount of time. I believe. Yeah. I think that's how it works because they had the RGB. They still have the RGB. I think tied down. Yep. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes, they do. The RGB wasn't necessarily Cherry, though. I thought they redesigned the base of those keys to do the it's, RGB it's thing. A new, it's a new switch from Cherry. Yeah, the yeah, RGB this is a new Cherry. No, but the, 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 the RGBs. RGB oh, like in, integrating the RGB into the key switch was a that Cherry That was a Cherry thing. thing. Okay. Yep. Just licensed exclusively to Corsair. Right. Okay. And apparently they've done that now with the Cherry MX Speed. They also did it with the Cherry MX Silent a couple of months ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, I huh. forgot about that one too. So this is the Corsair K70 RGB Rapid Fire and the K65 RGB Rapid Fire and the K70 Rapid Fire without RGB. No, it's just red. No oh. greens and blue. Okay, all right. So what's it's what's our what's the uh, what's the what's the the slant here, if you will, with the Cherry MX Speed switches, Jeremy? Well, I, I had to Google what a centen Newton was because <laughs> 45 CN, and I'm like, well. Okay, I think I know what that means, but all right. And yeah, that, that's exactly what it means, or essentially more or less 45 grams. Depending on gravity of where pressure. you are. Depending on, on gravity, yeah. right. So a 1.2 millimeter travel, which is ridiculously short. Is that? Do you know if that's travel? Before the so that's actuation distance. That's actuation, yes. and okay. they're linear. Because the keys travel linear actuation. Linear. So you're just resting your finger on that thing, and it's going. Yeah, the key travel and even the keyboards themselves look just like the older, you know, K70 yeah. RGB. You both, oh. when you both saw today, said it felt like cherry red. Yeah, they feel Keys like cherry in terms red. Of how they feel. Um, they don't have any kind of click to them. You, you don't yeah. know feedback. You don't know when they register. But pretty much if you're pushing them at all, they're registering. Chances yeah. are. Like, so it's 1.2 millimeters. So it's a little bit under, uh, or sorry, a little bit over half the distance you'd push for a red. Like they're saying it's about 40 for okay. 40% less 40% so, less actuation distance you know okay. it's that's if you can type that fast I bet you it'd actually be nice but well, I was, we were, we were debating if you're that used earlier. to bottoming him out I think this would drive you insane but see if you're typing you're going to bottom it out every time sure um, not necessarily not well, everyone. maybe not like really? touch typist kind of stuff oh yeah Really? Yeah, but I can't but imagine not but my out my that. counter to that though was if you're if you even kind of like kind of accidentally half hit another key while you're hitting a key if you are if you're like <laughs> almost, you know, your fingers a little bit off the off the one key you're trying to hit you like you're going to register two different key presses because it's just so damn sensitive right like it's you know yeah, one millimeter plug it in try it yeah we'll have to toy around right, even just like a, a little jiggle and yeah you'll have put two or three characters up there she yeah. could keep what if you know what you're doing registers anything <laughs> full of stand in the chat says breathe on the keyboard and you can write your name yeah yeah <sighs> I, I'll, I'll plug it in and try it uh-huh. It'd be yeah. really good for those things where you're trying to just, you know, type a bunch of ma- mishmash I and mean, just like... That's true. You know, or hacker, hacker have, typer. Does it have in-key rollover, too, that way? Of course. <laughs> okay. You, you just shake so the you... keyboard and see what it types, and it's like a Ouija board. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> an awesome idea. Talking. Oh, man. Uh, so that's available in K... What is it? Could I say K70 RGB and K65 RGB, and then in K70 just red. Is that what you said? Yeah. Jeremy? Okay. So no, it just it it's red switches or it's the new switches, but it only glows red. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. What right, are, so what are, did they the say? Price on these? Uh, they're not too bad for these types of keyboards. Uh, I think they're in line with seventy the previous... for the seventy RGB. Okay. Yeah. One forty for the uh, K sixty five and one thirty for the K seventy without the RGB. Is the K seventy K sixty five is a ten keyless probably? Yeah. <sighs> I do believe so. Yeah, it's thirty dollars price difference there is pretty noticeable. Okay, so how'd, how'd you like that uh, Pax Logitech uh, keyboard? Oh, that's a good point. That that was really cool. Did you see that? 
if you, if you get a hack a day, they had a post on it today or yesterday. You can pull Did it they? up. Well, the um, uh, I'll bring it up real quick because it was it was it was it's worth noting. It's really cool. Yeah. yeah. So they basically yeah you saw it. Remember we oh the light board they did the light board out of uh, Logitech keyboard. Oh that's what you're talking about. Oh yeah. sorry. Where were um, yeah that was pretty cool. Go up top. They the they top put hit, um like they took a bunch of those uh, Logitech keyboards that are also RGB and they put keycaps on them that were just basically the clear semi trans like diffusing thing that would be behind the black right. of the keys. Um, so basically just keys without like... An opaque cover by it, chance? Just keys without Semi-opaque. the black portion of them. You know? Because underneath, it's like a, a clear diffusing material so that the light can go through the part that's usually the letter um, that's backlit. Here you go. It was a 8-bit video wall made from 160 gaming keyboards. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> So this this is this is what it looked like, and uh, it's it was really cool. So that's that's all keyboards. Yep. Doing it, I, I wish I don't know if they did it. If, I think they only had demos running on it. I would love to them to figure out a way to map it to a display, like it, so it, that you could output an arcade game on it or something, right? I like I can't. That seems very difficult because I, I don't I don't think the the like the stuff doesn't stream over USB. It's pre baked. Yeah, like, right? like you're just some poor bastard had to program each of those keyboards separately. Well, they'd have to they'd have to start them all really at exactly cool. the same time. Yeah, which is uh, also so look, well, they're probably all plugged into games. a power source, and then they just turn on the power source at the same time. You see, they, they've got Ujesh, and and he's a really smart guy. It's true, and he could uh, true. true. He could make somebody figure here's, that out. Here's the thing, though, Brian. <laughs> the, <laughs> The, the price of that display, though. The latency of that display. The, the price and the latency. Because the I, price I, of those keyboards is kind of They already built there. it. Just do it. Oh. Oh, well, yeah. What happens if you throw a tethys ball at it? Does it register keystrokes and mess everything up? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very indestructible display. That's true. Yeah, that's true. It just bounces right you back. You can actually touch the, the pixels of that that's display. That's right. They're designed yeah. for it. You no, can roll th- over th- them. That was really cool. That was a just good put idea. put it all on the ground and out. roll over it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, a couple of other quick things to touch on here. Acer debuts a liquid-cooled Switch Alpha 12 convertible tablet um, that looks like that. It is, quote, the industry's first fanless two-in-one notebook to use a sixth-generation Core i7 processor. Uh, and these Intel offerings power a 12-inch 2160 by 1440 resolution IPS display. What is that, aspect ratio is what that? What is it doing there? Is 2160 that- by 1440? I don't know. Is that just 4 by 3 is that a thing? Is that, this kickstand? Are all those pieces connected together? or So, the Surface Pro style keyboard. Right. Magnetic keyboard. So magnetic. Yeah, it's a Surface Pro. Kickstand oh, okay. that folds into the back of the, okay. of the tablet. Although they do call it Space Age Cooling uh, with Acer Liquid Loop. It's a vapor mm-hmm. chamber. So it's, <laughs> it's a vapor so it's chamber. A super pipe. Yeah. Okay. There is no radiator. <laughs> there is only pump. Ah. Uh... <laughs> Pricing available as to pricing available, it will be available in North America in June, starting at five ninety nine. If so, that would be cheaper than I think any Surface Pro. See, sure. that's the for conspiracy theory. Johnny She is going to ace her <gasps> with that price. Five ninety nine. Five ninety nine. Thank you. <laughs> that would be what a shakeup in the industry that would be. <laughs> uh, and our, our our final news item here: Nintendo announces the NX launch window uh, that is their next generation console oh I really, get it now we don't really, yeah I get it we don't really talk about consoles a whole lot on here especially from Nintendo because they're not te- they're not typically very technologically advanced in terms of hardware sure um, the NX should be interesting uh, it will be launching in March 2017 okay so but it will not be shown at E3 for some damn reason they're not going to show it at E3 well they maybe. said they're not well, they said that Zelda will be the spotlight. Then they also announced Zelda for the NX. Right, but they said it will only be playable on a, on the Wii U. Okay, that game. And that, I can totally see that. It was such an odd statement. Like, I could totally see them showing it. We're going to make the it, NX in March. Yeah, don't worry about it. We're not going to show it to you in June. We're going to wait until later. Mm-hmm. We're only going to have one playable game at the entirety of E3, and it's going to be Zelda on Wii U. Mm. And it's in both the Wii U and the NX version of the new Zelda game are going to launch at the same time in March 2017. Not that anyone was going to buy a Wii U, like... But clearly you should not, not Yeah, now. now you should definitely not. Yeah. 
So I, I don't at, at this point, since the announcement's already out there, why you don't try to get people excited about the NX to like pre-order and do all that stuff and start showing stuff. They'll, they'll clearly show things between E3 and the actual launch. But all I'm looking forward to is having another midnight launch event where I can go pick up a unit and we can come back and live stream a teardown of the hardware. Because we've done that now for the Wii and then the Xbox One and oh, the man. PS4. Oh, man, did we have to do that for the PS4.5 and the oh, Xbox yeah, absolutely. 1.5? Yeah. Yeah, it's funny that you it was going to be years before we had to. <laughs> that's, uh, Lisa Sue had uh, mentioned that uh, a, a three next-generation console wins... And obviously, oh, she we did, yeah. now know them all. Well, they had three current generation console wins. Yeah. But I think she was talking about this well, year. Well, the Phantom guys were coming back, and they were uh, <laughs> well, they got to get AMD to do their... And Nintendo games. has been using AMD for much longer. They, AMD was in the GameCube. Right. GameCube. That was their first. They, Art, Art X. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I know th- th- we're not a console podcast, but... Uh, but, but this uh, is going to be Polaris and Zen, probably. Zen, I don't know. In March of 2017, May, I, you don't think a Zen I, APU? I don't know. Formula I don't know. Exist? I don't know. I mean, Nintendo is pretty cheap. I think Jaguar. Somebody they was, didn't exactly do that with the Wii U. Somebody was complaining about how I said the word Jaguar. Jaguar, because you don't say it right. What do I the say? Jaguar. You Jaguar. Say it, you say it like it's say U it I R E or something like Jaguar. Quagmire. Jaguar. 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 There's like four different You're ways wrong. people say that word. Jaguar? Is that how I should Jaguar. say it? You're not in England. Jaguar? He's he's asking you how he should say it. Yeah, how do you say the word Jaguar? Jaguar. That's something. Nah, weird. that's dumb. Jaguar. You just you you had like, like over oh, it's a Jaguar. W A R? Yeah. Jaguar. Oh. So Jaguar. Yeah. Like Close. like the band so that wrong. spits blood out of their <laughs> yeah. Jaguar. Like you're saying out Jaguar. Out Jaguar. Jaguar. Oh, that's not it. Jaguar. 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 Dale Polka says Jaguar. Jaguar. Jaguar? That's kind of an overseas it's like pronunciation. Bill S. Preston. Jaguar, Jaguar, Jaguar is the British way of saying it. Yeah, like if you when you see a, hear a snooty British guy talk about the car Jaguar. in a commercial, right? It's Jaguar. 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 Yeah. Right? Oh, well, that's like right. That's, that's the, and then, yeah. you know, several years ago, you, you could say, like, oh, you mean your Ford? And then you would get really pissed, <laughs> right? You can't do that anymore, but. You know, there's that. Uh, let's get into our hardware software picks of the week. I really didn't bring the phone over here. Uh, <clears throat> my pick is the Galaxy Samsung Galaxy S7, uh, and, and specifically for its purpose of water resistance, not proofness. Uh, water <laughs> resistance. He was pouring it's a wine. Software update. He right? was pouring wine on it. On his. <laughs> <laughs> I felt very uh, little John. Little John esque. <laughs> Wait, is it Lil John or Lil, Lil Wayne? Lil, Lil Wayne. Wayne. What? Lil Wayne. what? Is that? But is that Lil Don't John? Don't you diss John Wayne? Wayne. Yeah, it's Lil Wayne. Okay. Uh, and I was just—he was over there at the sink. Just, I was just holding it under the sink it under while, the I was, while I was doing it. So it was funny because I was like, "Oh no, it's doing an update. It's, the, it's getting warm. Yeah. I'll go cool it off." And so I was pouring it under cold tap of all water, the times, right? And to just tempt the fate there. on a on a device while you, it's you doing. You could probably also update. just like. Put that in the freezer because condensation isn't really going to be yeah. like it's the same thing, Good. right? I mean, the, I the reason I the reason I thought this was interesting now is I'm going on vacation next week, and out of the blue, my wife sends me a text message while she's at work, <laughs> and she says, "I want a, She says, "I want a Samsung 7. I was like, "I'm she sorry, she just got a six. She got an iPhone." And so did you look yeah. at her and she she's used an iPhone for the past eight want. years. She wanted a Samsung Seven, and I was like. What what do you mean? She's like the phone, the Samsung. I was like, oh, you mean the Galaxy S7? I was like, why? And in my head, I'm thinking, absolutely not, absolutely not. <laughs> like, I'm not switching. You're not. You know, I'm not going to go through this series of questions that you went from from a Windows laptop to a Mac and uh-huh. take it from an iPhone to an Android device. Uh-huh. She said, uh, one of her nurse friends at the hospital has one and showed all the pictures that she took on vacation underwater with the phone. Uh huh. Right. She's like, it's so cool that, you know, they use it in the pool and they can take underwater photos. And I want one that can do that. It's like, well, we have some, we have a couple of them here, actually. Like, I'll do that. And I started doing research. And they don't want you to take it in salt water yep. or uh, ionized water. I yep. guess they don't say pools, like chlor- Wait a minute. chlorinated Isn't water. her phone currently in a water-resistant water case? case? It's in a water-resistant case. Yes, it is. So she could, 
in theory. But she thinks it's like, well, why even take the risk if you have one that's like waterproof already? No, you've yeah. got just, a water which, which is a fair water. assessment. Yeah, right? but the ports on hers are protected as opposed, like, are yeah, gasketed yeah, 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 as yeah. opposed to the S7. But again, all Samsung says is if you take it in salt water uh-huh. to clean it out really well with regular water. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. I find that awesome, right? Like if you take it into the ocean, you got to get the salt out. That's of it. fine, but just like, yeah, have a cooler full of water and like splash it around. Just in you're, there you're drinking and, water. You're just like, yeah, you know, and you're like just clean like, out all the pores. So and the all people that at stuff. the beach can really look at you weird. You're just sitting at the beach, just, just pouring water on your what? phone. <laughs> what? 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 Uh, and then you'd have some guy. Uh, that's the really good commercials where the guy pours it on his phone and it like all it sparks. sparks and stuff, which obviously would not actually happen, but like sparks. Best, best comment in in the chat. Get a Ziploc bag. I use uh, when I use my phone. I know. In the hot tub. Breast I use bag. a breast, yeah, breast milk yeah. bag, right? We've and you have this. and you it's have uh, and you have one for your iPad too. You have like a yeah, like but a it's zipper. not. You don't get the clarity. Like, that's true. Going you to can't the shoot bag photos bag. through that. That yeah. does not. Yeah, work. not only work. that, but I mean, I only have so many condoms that I can send him. Right, and those don't have very good clarity either. But, exactly. But her current uh, <laughs> case that her her current case that her iPhone is in has a like optical grade. Cover I, over I, the assume, camera. I assume so. Yeah, yeah. It'd be a pretty awful case if it didn't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I agree. Um, what camera? But I, Se- Sebastian's phone has this feature where it stops working right away when it's submerged. <laughs> my, my mind just thinks of like, what if you didn't? Like, I guess they protect against this, but like, what if you didn't let it dry out all the way and you plugged it in? Like, you're potentially shorting stuff out as yeah. the water evaporates off, and then you get yeah. salt crystals. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. he's, talking about, he's talking about now if there's not yeah, even yeah. salt. Like, he's talking oh. about just water in general. Like, I this know they true. have water sensor in there, but like, what if it's just on the edge and it's like a little bit of moisture in there, and you plug in a USB connector and it just fries? I trust them to, to uh. assume that people are stupid and that they would like Why? plug it in underwater. Phone, Ken? <laughs> plug it in underwater. Like, <laughs> just plug it in underwater, <laughs> right? How about the Note 5 where you can put the stylus in the wrong way and break the phone? Well, yeah, that's, that's true. That's pretty <laughs> bad. What if you take an external battery with you while you're like <laughs> scoop, like snorkeling? So, so like, you plug that in. And you plug it in and you and have both just, of them together. It's all underwater. You should, Surely that battery's waterproof. You should then probably you get, report right? back and tell us how that goes. <laughs> then yeah. you get a lithium fire. Or your next Oh, man. <laughs> so there's that. You know. Uh, in any event. Uh, Jeremy, what do you got for us? All right. Well, they gave it an awful name, but the Humble Book Bundle this week isn't all that bad. I, and you get William Schatz Jr., you get uh, Bunny Huang. Uh, if. You kind of want to understand basically how what the web runs on. Uh, Linux and Python are going to do it for you. <laughs> You're recommending me to buy a book that is titled Automate the Boring Stuff with Python. That and, sounds like, like mean, exactly what you, you know. need, Ryan. Is that good beach, ride, b- good beach reading? <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> that's, that's me. I'm going to be pouring water on my you phone. You can figure out how to this. more adequately benchmark things by having uh, Python do the work for you. Well, once I get, or if you want to be silly, scroll down. There's bash. the Maker's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse, which would probably be more entertaining. Okay, all right. I've got like a seven inch stack of Python. But I mean, I once we get in Bash in Windows, then maybe. Yeah, yeah. Right. But uh, all told, fifteen bucks for all of that ain't so bad. Designing BSD root kits, Bitcoin for the befuddled. That's a pretty good title. Yeah. Plus, look at that alligator. The Hacking the Xbox book is apparently pretty good. I never actually at? read it. Yeah. It's in no, the top uh, row. It's the Bunny Huang one. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, oh, okay. I should read right, that. Like, the, it's not just dumb. Like There are some good authors. Because William Schatz Jr. has written a shitload of Linux books. Yeah. Cool. A literal shitload. What is... Uh, never mind. I don't want to know. <laughs> Josh, what do you got? Me. You know, no office is complete without... The portable refrigerator. It okay. stores my beer, and then it heats up my hot dogs, so uh, I can have hot, uh, steaming hot dogs to throw down my hallway. Uh, does it actually heat? Yes. Just say it, portable six can mini fridge, cooler and warmer. Wait, you said it cools off your beer, but I you usually drink out of bottles. Does a bottle fit in that? You take, like out the, cans uh, you take out the the divider, you know, and you can fit two yeah. in there. Or I guess maybe four. Oh, yeah. You can fit four four bottle four beers, beers or six cans. So this is a uh, what do you call this? Uh, USB powered. Yeah, yeah. Con wine. What's the technology? Peltier. Thermoelectric. Um, yeah, it's a pel- Peltier. Yeah. Or so Peltier. 
you want to put cold beer in there and then it keeps it cold. Correct? I mean, it'll get yes. it there. You just got to wait a long time. Otherwise, it will take a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Because I had one of those uh, on your counter, um, like Heineken beer tap keg things, yep. right? And it was the same way. If you put in a room temperature one and wanted it to get cold, it was going to take a couple of days yep. to do it. But if you put well, in a cold I, one, the, it kept it the, cold really easily. Going in here, mm-hmm. um, I've, I've got one sitting next to me. A bit older model, but uh, I can put a warm beer in there, and within an hour, it's it's significantly cooler to drink. Not ice cold, yeah, but significantly. Cooler. Will it get things ice cold, or is it not able to do that at all? Even you if know, you I've never cold. had enough beer in there for long enough to <laughs> test that. <laughs> it's for science, Josh. Because okay. it's, yes. it's a fridge and Ooh, it's within our reach. Look at look at the frequently it. bought together is it's that and a first year's quick serve bottle warmer. <laughs> <laughs> huh. That, that yeah. makes perfect sense. To I'm me. having a small child and I'm and I need beer. By the bed, I need yeah. beer as I feed the child. Yeah, I, I just can't make myself like. I had one of these like. Bottle for you, kid. If there's something I need to do, it's at least walk to the fridge. <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah, but I'm stuck yeah, but here in my office Ken. for hours on end, talking to you assholes. What is that draw? Is it only half an amp? What? How much? Pa- it's, it's AC powered, powered, isn't it? No, it's it's AC. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. No, yeah, it may have a, a USB later, so. function, but right, it's, so it's, it's not. It's, so it's not. I was, I was joking. I can remember uh, years ago getting one of the USB powered ones that was like a coaster. That you set yep. your can on it. If you had an aluminum can on it, it would. I have one that looks like a little like miniature bucket. refrigerator, but it's only just big enough for one can. What? And it's actually USB the, powered. What? What is the good of that? I don't know. I never plugged it in. <laughs> okay. Well, now we. Now we. Okay. That it, it was. Though. It was given to me. Okay. Uh, your last. What do you got? Uh, so uh, Anchor, our friends who uh, we purchased plenty of USB charging things from. Sure. Uh, now they have like uh, cables, their own lines of cables. On okay. Amazon, they're pretty cool. Uh, the cables. They come Catch with them. the they come with the Velcro tie. Yep, yep. Like you know, just kind of like built into them, so you can't lose it. These are the micro USB. Uh, those are micro USB, which are much cheaper than uh, Lightning. <laughs> they do have Lightning. Okay. Uh, so you can get see. you can get twelve ninety nine for five micro USB. Yeah. Or nine ninety nine for one one Lightning. What? One lightning. Uh, and that micro USB listing has like a bunch of different variations of it. You can get like you know what like six different cables, different lengths, one, different two, whatever. Two threes. There's one, all sorts six. of different ones. And then if you want to get really crazy, they have like nylon braided uh, Lightning ones. Nylon. And I think braided? also nylon. They have like a different line that's like different colors of nylon, like braid, kind of like the mouse cable nylon yeah, yeah. braiding. Um, so if you're worried about them getting, you know, just kind of like tore up in your bag and stuff like that, that's that's a three foot cable. Almost always be UL, so you don't have to worry about random fires. How long have you had these? Uh, I've had that for like a month now. And have you used it? Yeah. Does it have used proper it time. cable relief? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's uh, seems reasonable. It's a rather personal question, isn't it? <laughs> no. I, yeah, I don't know what it I is about know. all lightning cables tending to suck, but. Those seem that seems more durable than the standard it does. Apple Lightning cable. Yeah, it does. You know, uh, just yeah. the insulation is $10 thicker. Dollars for one cable, and I'm thinking like, well, I want one in the car, and I want one at the office, and I want the house, and I need yeah, yeah, one yeah. upstairs the house, one downstairs the house, and then like one downstairs but, the house for my wife. And but one the thing is, that's like eighty dollars worth of cables. But you're paying the that. same amount of money for the Apple cables. This is an Apple certified cable. Is the Apple one just ten dollars too? I think it's a if you bit. if you find a deal, it's like ten bucks. Mm-hmm. They're supposed to be like twenty or something, yeah. you know. But I, I bought the Amazon Basics ones, and they've cheaped out on those significantly yeah. recently. They're, it's they're kind of bad now. But not only that, but like you know, Anchor their warranty is pretty good on stuff, right? Like, like remember yeah. with the chargers, yeah. if you had a port go bad, they were just yeah, like the, replacing the, them. And here's a you know, the the Space Gray. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, this uh, is just braided. That is uh thirteen ninety nine for one. Yeah, I mean that's not much more to pay so look, for. Look at that, Ken. What? No, I don't believe it. Up to four thousand times you can do that. It says. So, so like what? Bend the cable. So yes. That'll, so bend that'll, the cable. So that'll last him <laughs> six Good. days. Is that what that's saying? Four thousand plus. I guess. It's not plugged oh, in. It's over anything. four thousand. Damn cable. It's bending at a ninety degree angle. Uh yeah. no, that's a one eighty. But okay. What? Yeah, like you know when it's the curving, full, the full when it's curving the other way. Yeah. That's, that's oh well, I. 
I mean, it's it, that doesn't seem like very many bins. I don't know. I mean, they're selling them on their durability. They're like, look, these are very I, durable. Yeah, I, I think that's more of a, a of a indictment on all of the other cables that exist. You should find an intern to just start bending cables and see if micro USB One, cables fail at the same two, rate. We should three. We should, I've never had a micro USB cable just break. Like do yeah. what the lightning cables do in yeah. terms of fraying and, and right. severing. Oh, God, no. Right. <laughs> right. And, and I use micro sure USB cables why, for actually. years and years and years and years. Yeah. And I just started using lightning cables this June. And I've already had one or I've actually already had two go. Yeah. And if you compare out. these, like the end is basically identical. Like yeah. the end on the on the anchor micro yeah. USBs versus yeah. the anchor lightning. So all right, everybody, that's going to be it for our show for this week. Thank you very much for joining us. Again, PCPro.com slash podcast, PCPro.com slash uh, uh, subscribe, PCPro.com slash the end. Actually, I don't think that goes anything. PCPro.com is what I meant to say there. Uh, go there, find out all of our content. Like I said, in the next day or so, I will have the review up of the Radeon Pro Duo. So if you want to see uh, how that stacks up against uh, other products that are available, we would uh, appreciate that. Uh, and next week, I will probably not be on the show. We'll figure that out as we go um, since I'll be in Florida. Um, but can they don't have back? internet in Florida? They don't have internet. Uh, it's my sister-in-law's birthday on Wednesday. And it was a long story. We'll talk about <laughs> it later. I was already what, getting... What, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and host it, and that way I can get all kinds of cutouts and stutters, <laughs> and it'll be so much fun for everybody, and our, our ratings will just skyrocket. I, I can't imagine of, a better outcome for us than that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but lots of good stuff coming up, guys. So make sure you keep checking back at the website. Uh, and we appreciate your support. Uh, let me make sure I don't have. Uh, nope. No, no. No more Patreons. No more Patreons on this. From I'm, Ken did 9 11. No, apparently not. They didn't update <laughs> that. That was such like the mic drop. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, so thank you guys for joining us. Uh, and we'll see you next week. I'm Ryan Trout. I'm Jeremy Holstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. And I'm Alan Momentano. Bye. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at patreon.com slash pcper.